Good evening and I hope your Tuesday has been amazing. My name is Kerry Kagiri and I'd love to welcome you to Health Check, the most informative show in the east, west, south of Sahara, east of Limpopo, whatever you'd like to call it. Today, the November 17th, is World Prematurity Day. What does this mean? Well, we're going to be discussing what that's all about. Your, what you need to do right now, just one assignment. Share this video from whatever platform you're watching it from. If you're watching from your phone, call a friend. Tell them to watch as well. If you're watching us on Facebook, click that share button and start a watch party. If you're watching on YouTube as well, go ahead and share it. Welcome to Health Check. With me is Isdora OPT. How are you? Fine, thank you. So you're a nurse and a midwife. Yes. Please explain. Someone might be watching and they're like, midwife, bibi wakatikati. They don't know what that is. Mm. Okay, thank you for having us here and happy World Prematurity Day. Yay! <laughs> okay, I'm a nurse, uh -huh. midwife. Uh -huh. mm, basically, a midwife is someone who assists a mother mm -hmm. to bring forth her newborn baby. Wow! Yes. That's so exciting. And you watch this thing happen. You must be very close to God. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. And with us also is Dr. Beth Miner, who is a pediatrician. Karibu sana. Thank you so much, and I'm um, happy to be here. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Karibu. Explain yes. to someone who's watching pediatrician, what exactly do I don't like to assume everyone knows. Okay. So a pediatrician is uh, a doctor who takes care of children right from birth all the way in Kenya up to 13 years. Okay. Yes. So, so up to 13? So yes. Akifika 13 unapatia nani? We had over to the so-called physician. Okay. Yes. But wow. in between now, we are coming up, sorry, we are coming up with a specialty of adolescents mm -hmm. and young adults. Oh, so so that, in between, there will be another specialist in between, and then the adult can take care after 18 years. That's needed. Yes. Because Absolutely. problems of adolescents are not the usual ones. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, they need more support, care. Yes. You know, it's an intricate time to be... Uh, yeah, that age. Well, today's conversation is on World Prematurity Day. And as we celebrate this, what would you like to tell people? Just let's first take some time to create awareness around what World Prematurity Day. May I start with you? It's, a do it's Dora. Okay, this is a special day mm -hmm. because these preterm babies need us, their mothers need us. And it's high time we create this awareness so that they, know, they may not feel that they may be giving birth to a preterm baby is something wrong mm -hmm. or maybe something not normal because uh, preterm birth can come when not expected so mothers must be told to expect this and when it comes mm -hmm. they should be at least guided on how they can handle this situation absolutely yes. and dr beth this is really your forte of now post because now you know his daughter has helped the baby is out yes. and now you've been brought to this child. Yes. What does this day mean to you? Before even we go to all the details and the specifications of the care. Thank you. This day to me is a very great day indeed because there is nothing that really gives a lot of happiness and give a sense of uh, you know, importance to a mother than holding a baby mm -hmm. and nursing that baby to be a, a mature person. You know? So this World Premature, uh, Prematurity Day is a day that we commemorate to celebrate these babies who are born too soon before mm -hmm. their time comes and somehow empowers the mothers to know that these babies, small as they are, they can achieve their full potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this year theme has been together for the babies who've come too soon, mm. caring for the future. So essentially trying to tell the society that there is hope. Mm -hmm. Even if this baby was born before their time, given the proper care and, and nurtured well, they will thrive and actually it. become adults. Wow. Well, according to the World Health Organization, every year an estimated 15 million babies are born before the completed weeks of gestation, which is 37 weeks. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. But there are survival chances. Now, we got to meet with Mercy and Kevin Kibet, who are the parents of baby Victor and Vincent, who are 11 months twins. And that's when they were born, actually. They were born really, really early. Let's get to see their story from them. Last year, they only did part of member. 
Ya begitu. Nilipokuwa in that condition nilianza kugonjeka. Na nikaenda ile hospital nilikuwa naenda clinic wakanikata kwa nitu mama Marusi. Marusi walinichukua. Ah nikaenda huko siku ya kwanza ya pili. Ya pili nilikuwa nimerudi appointment. Ndipo daktari nikamwelezea venye na feel. Kuna discharge zilikuwa zinatoka na umwa. So daktari akaniambia sizi nda nyumbani na hiyo discharge. Lazima nikae hospitali ndio niangalie. Nilika huko kitu tu. Ah uh, June ile admitwa did 5 December. Nikaka wakiniangalia ikafika sasa wanataka kuni discharge. Nitoke tu. Hata nikiendelea kukaa bado ile discharge inatoka na hakuna. Walikuwa wameniambia in case of anything naweza rudi. So was on Sunday. Uh, mtoto wangu na baba yake walikuwa wamekuja kuniona tukaka tukafly hiyo jioni nilikuwa ni distajue mande hiyo jioni nikaanza kuumwa akaniauliza kuna miezi ngapi nikamwambia hata ndio imefikisha saba. niambia wacha tuangalie ka utaenda theater but watoto ni wadogo sana wakitoka bodi niambia wanaweza survive ama wakae nika upalitio na nikatorewa watoto. Huyu alikuwa kilo moja. Huyu alikuwa 1.5. Sina maone. Niliparoto wakiwa kwa incubator. Nilishtuka. Cuz mimi sijaona watoto wakiwa hiyo size. Ngoma mara yangu ya kwanza. Na nikajiuliza Mungu. Ah watakuwa kweli. Kuna pipe ilikuwa imepita kwa mapoa. So uli kulikuwa na sealage ulikuwa naenda unachukua kikombe unaosha vizuri unakamua sasa unarudi unawapea ulikuwa na eka hiyo tube ulikuwa naingiza sealage na rudi na mwaga maziwa hapo inasonga so ilikuwa na ndio ile kiwango tampea kulingana na kilo zake so victor alikuwa ana reduce kilo. Venye sasa nilikuwa nakamua naona anaendelea sasa ku gain kilo. Aka gain aka gain ikafika 1. Kufika 1 sasa akaanza tuma shida mara nafaa kuongezwa damu. Huyu anatolewa oxygen akitolewa leo kesho nitapata amerudishwa. Ikafika sasa ni amefikisha 1.2. Nikatolewa room 1 apelekwa lumto. Huyu mwingine alikuwa sawa alikuwa na 1.4 tukienda room 2. Tukaenda room 2. Ah, sasa hapo sasa ni unakaa. Yaani nguo yenye ulikuwa nayo ilikuwa open. So then kitanda ilikuwa juu. Ulikuwa na lala na watu wako kwa kifua. Siwezi nikasema kangaroo ni kitu mbaya kitu mzuri sana especially ni wewe mwenyewe kuamua na kuoneshana umekubali kama uko hospitali unaoneshana na daktari au na haja pia hata atakuachilia so lazima mcooperate nilienda kangaru akagain kilo poa akagain akagain Vincent alikuwa 2.4 Victor alikuwa 1.8 after 2 months kitu ikuwa na two weeks ndio sasa ni kona i have that hope nizenda nyumbani so the moment ulitok hospital wakakuja nyumbani nilianza kuona changes mimi mtoto alikuwa mnyonge sasa hizo mtoto wako active anacheza ananyonya vizuri sasa zimu kuna anayekuwa blessed feeded anakataa lakini sasa yeye ananyonya vizuri kabisa so ukipata mtoto three term is like umepata mtoto normal the thing is mtoto ajamaliza kupumua yake mbi mwili yake ni kidogo ajafikisha kilo zake yani unaona huyu ameza mtoto health miss jazam mtoto health uki unaona wako si health 
na wake ni help lakini itafika mahali ukilinganisha watoto useme mtoto ni pretam watakata so never give up sasa ni kiwatazama hata kama nimekasirika wazee na jazo na furaha sana gozi penye wametoka ni mbali siamini hata wana waangalie hivi siamini kama ni yao wana wanakaa ni miujiza kwa sababu walikuwa wadogo mimi tuweza nikaambia wala baba nyo kuna watoto pretam first of all inafaa bibi zao wa appreciate sana kwa sababu au ndo most of the time wako na watoto inafaa appreciate sana then inafaa washikilia mkono na pia watoto inafaa watunze kabisa kwa sababu watoto wanahitaji a lot of attention sasa abijuju Wow, that case study has left us smiling. I just have to repeat what it says. Abuju buju. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. <sighs> That's such a testimony. I yes. love when you said, you know, sometimes I'm angry and I look at my kids and, you know, mm-hmm. everything turns. Mm-hmm. Just let's comment on, on what you are. Um, let me start with you, Dr. Beth. Oh, I'm so, so happy mm-hmm. to actually see babies who started at a very, you know, very, uh, very small, I mm-hmm. must say, because one kilo baby is what we call very preterm. You know, wow. even these preterms, they have their own classification wow. depending on the weight they are born at. So if you are below one kilo, you are extreme preterm. If you are one to about 1.5, you are very preterm. And then above that, we call you late preterm. Wow. So from what I'm seeing, they were pretty small. Wow. And she forged on. So really... For me, the joy of seeing a mother smiling and the babies are happy mm-hmm. and they are thriving, it gives me a lot of joy and it, it, it motivates me to really continue doing what I'm doing. I'm coming back to you to explain to us what it means to be preterm. Because mm-hmm. someone is watching, maybe from the story they've picked up, but you will explain that. Okay. Just comment on the video, it's Dora. Okay, as a nurse, I feel so happy. Mm-hmm. When parents go home and feel that they received the care they desperately needed. Wow. They're happy their child are doing well. Mm. And they really appreciate whatever the care they received. Mm-hmm. They're very happy and I'm also happy. Wow, absolutely. Yes. Dr. Ari, explain yes. to us, what does it mean to be preterm? Okay, preterm baby essentially means a baby who is born before 37 completed weeks okay. of gestation. Mm-hmm. Normal pregnancy goes to 40 weeks. So if you're born before 37 weeks, essentially you're preterm baby. Mm-hmm. Now we go down and now subclassify that because some are uh, born pretty early, others maybe towards you know the end of uh, I mean the term, mm-hmm. and all that has implication on their survival and the compl- kind of complications they get. So the smaller a baby is and the younger they are, the lower their chance of survival to start with, mm-hmm. and the higher the complications that we anticipate. So for us clinicians, when we see a very low Bath with baby or uh, the very the extreme or very preterm, mm-hmm. we really have to put everything uh, uh, at, uh, in order so that we, we ensure that all the needs they, 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 they require, mm-hmm. somehow we can provide. It's not easy, but we are working with what we have. So uh, the, the, the extreme preterms are born before 28 weeks. Before 28, okay. So that technically is before six months. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there are many will be a kilo or below. Mm-hmm. Now the very preterm are uh, between 28 weeks and 32 weeks. Mm-hmm. Then the late or what you call moderate to late preterm is the only one who is born between 32 and, and 36 weeks. Or 36. 36. Yeah, okay. because 37 and above we are good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's what premature it is. Is Dora you have seen and encountered as a midwife? You're also in that process. Mm-hmm. What do you think are some of the causes that could lead to preterm babies? Preterm babies or preterm birth mm-hmm. can come as a, relas- at a, as a result of either maternal or fetal causes. Mm-hmm. Maternal causes can be maybe conditions like diabetes, hypertension can lead a mother to have premature labor. Maybe infections like severe UTI or infections of the, uh, m- the membrane. I'm not I love that you mentioned UTI because we've actually done an episode on this. Please check it out on Hope TV, on our YouTube page or Facebook. And understand that mm. that condition we talked about with the gynecologist and a male on what's a male? Oh, 
Orthodontist, oncologist, Onco- not oncologist, mm-hmm. the male doctor for men things, yes. <laughs> Urolo- <laughs> yeah, urologist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, but there must be an anyway. You understand? Mm-hmm. Please check it out because that could be a cause for preterm, but if not, uh, sort it ahead. We have also multiple pregnancy. Mm-hmm. A mother, maybe who carries maybe triplets or twins, mm-hmm. she cannot be able to carry this pregnancy to term. So mm-hmm. chances of having a preterm labor is a bit high. Mm-hmm. And also we have poor nutrition when a mother is not feel, feeding well. Mm-hmm. Maybe through her pregnancy, the chances that this baby can come before and term. Wow. Yeah. Dr. if there's anything you'd like to add, you're welcome. But I'd like you to get into some of the symptoms and signs you can see uh, from a mother. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Additionally, what she said uh-huh. is that a significant proportion, really, nobody can pinpoint what caused the preterm. They just go into spontaneous labor mm-hmm. and they deliver a baby who is not time. But uh, uh, additionally, or maybe if I can elaborate a bit on the nutrition, we look at nutrition both extremes. Mm-hmm. Overweight, obesity, and stunted and malnourished women. So those two categories are a risk to getting a preterm baby. Mm-hmm. Other infections, HIV, malaria, any infections that potentially can go into the uterus. Can tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, COVID. yes. Uh, COVID, COVID, they are still doing some research, okay. yes, but there is actually a thought to us that, mm-hmm. that it could be triggering some adverse pregnancy outcomes okay. that still being studied. Yeah, so, yes, so those kind of infections and then other things are anatomical. There are some mothers who are born with what we call by by, co- by convict uterus. Mm-hmm. So this uterus has a membrane that has separated it. So the baby ideally does not have enough space to grow. So the baby's so, on which side? Yeah, whichever it, wow. it, it lands. Yeah, so it restricts the growth of mm-hmm. that baby. So if the baby goes to term, they might be, uh, end up being babies who call, uh, who have what you call int- uh, int- IUGR, int- mm-hmm. intrauterine growth retardation. Yeah. Or they may, out, uh, they may actually come out before term. Wow. You asked me about the signs. Signs basically are signs of labor, mm-hmm. but happening before term, okay. before they are expected date of delivery. Mm-hmm. So they'll experience lower abdominal pains that increases over time. Mm-hmm. They start probably having a, a vaginal discharge, which eventually now uh, the membranes rupture and they actually get amniotic fluid leaking. Maybe because we are on a yeah. health show, we can go ahead and say what are the colors of the discharge that comes because mm-hmm. we've learned over time that there are different ca- kinds of discharge. Okay. Now, the, okay, as you say, there are uh, different colors. It depends on uh, one, if it's an infection, the, offe- the offensive bug, okay. Yeah, bacteria. Okay. Okay. So it can range anything from creamish white to greenish foul smelling wow. discharges. Okay. And that can point to an infection. Okay. STDs can also trigger, yes. you know, uh, uh, preterm labor. Okay. But uh, amniotic fluid uh, normally is clear. It's mm-hmm. just clear liquid, uh, yeah, fluid. But sometimes it's greenish in color, mm-hmm. especially if the fetus is undergoing some other stress when in, ut- uh, in the okay. uterus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what about the spotting? The bleeding, yes, yes, that's another thing. Now, at term, before even when the mother is going into labor, they can experience that spotting, uh, which we, what what is uh, commonly referred as show, mm-hmm. and that is normal. But if you start getting that before your time of labor, yes. then we get concerned actually because it either means there's some uh, the, the the cervix is probably opening, mm-hmm. or the placenta is not in the right place. Mm-hmm. So you could be, it could be the earliest sign of what you call APH or uh, antipartum hemorrhage. Yes. So we take it very seriously yeah. when you start spotting before your time. Actually, I'm coming to you as we talk about treatment for preterm babies, because I know mm-hmm. this is now your forte, yeah. your genie yes. But I want you to add, as a midwife, I mean, this is, you know, you're taking the wife through. I know, do midwives do the same job as a doula? Am I, you're mostly on the birthday? Doula. Oh yeah, like the ones who take through like from day one of pregnancy to the very end, or you're just like in the pre- in the in the bathroom. No, you're there through all the process. Yes, yes. Very good. So take us through. What are some of the things you have seen uh, out of your own experience? Mm, on uh, preterm birth. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I've seen mothers who maybe after giving birth to preterm babies, they come mm. so psychologically tortured. Mm-hmm. 
they fear, some of them even will fear holding their babies mm -hmm. because they feel the baby is so fragile that the baby so can tiny. break. Mm -hmm. So these are mothers that need so much psychological support, mm -hmm. they need so much health education mm -hmm. on how to handle these babies. Mm -hmm so that at least these babies can get good care from them. Absolutely. Yes. Let's talk about before the birth. What are some of the things you've seen? Have you been, you know, about to help someone give birth and then it came earlier than you thought? Okay, those things happen from Pumwani because I work in Pumwani yes. and these are things that happen on a daily basis. Wow. So mothers come and maybe they're not sure if they're in labor or not yes. because maybe they, they were expecting their babies to come, maybe months to come, mm -hmm. but here they are, they are in labor, maybe they are bleeding, the amniotic fluid is draining, wow. so they are confused. Yeah. And it's upon us as midwife to guide these mothers, mm -hmm. at least to reassure them and make them feel that these are things that can happen, but there is a way out, there is a way we can help them Absolutely. through it. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. Maybe any challenging thing you've gone through, they didn't know they are in labor, labda ya takusawa, alafu wendu una realize, ah, this child needs to get out of your stomach. They've even maybe breached or whatever. Yes, definitely. When a mother comes, you will do examination. Okay. Uh -huh. When you check the fundal height, that is to know the gestation of this pregnancy, you will definitely realize this is not a term pregnancy. Yeah. So definitely you will be expecting a preterm baby. Mm -hmm. You do your vaginal examination, you will realize the cervix is open, meaning the baby is coming out, okay. definitely. So the next thing is just to get prepared yeah. and receive the baby. Yeah. You inform the newborn unit so that they expect a newborn baby yes. being admitted soon in the Absolutely. unit. Absolutely. Yes. So when it's preterm babies, they come out vaginally? Yes. Okay, vaginally. Okay, thank you. Treatment. The baby yes. has come. His daughter has brought the baby to Daktari. Daktari, look at this child. What do you do? Okay. Thank you for that. Maybe before I answer that, yes. let me uh, add add a bit that sure. not all preterm babies are born uh, vaginally. Okay. Some end up complicating and you have to go to theater. Okay. For example, if they get what you call fetal distress, mm -hmm. they're not breathing well when we monitor, yet the, the labor is not progressing as mm -hmm. it should be. So we still do cesarean section even with, for preterm. Wow. And most of like you heard this particular uh, mother who talked to us just a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. she actually had to deliver via CS. Yes, because she one, they were yes. three terms. Yes. As well. Before yes. you answer, you're welcome yeah. to ask all the questions you have. Go ahead, triple two, three, two. I have paid consultation as I do every week for our <laughs> nurse and, and, and midwife and our doctor, our pediatrician in studio. So please go ahead, text in triple two, three, two. Comment on Facebook, comment on YouTube. We'll be coming to your questions as we continue. Okay. Doctor, treatment. Yes. I like looking at treatment from even before birth because the outcome of this baby, the final outcome will be determined by many factors, mm -hmm. not just at the time of delivery alone, mm -hmm. but even how well we have taken care of this mother before the onset wow. of labor. So what we are saying, we encourage mothers to really go uh, do, uh, have their ANC visits, mm -hmm. that is antenatal clinic. Yes. Ideally, minimum four in the whole process, mm -hmm. but uh, nowadays uh, w uh, World Health Organization is um, rooting for eight visits. Because so the more, month. the better. Every month, yes. Because that way we are able to pick out some of the risk factors that can potentially trigger you to getting a preterm baby. And if you have any modifiable factors, any treatable conditions, then we address them at that time. While at it, we also, together with the midwives, of course, work together to ensure that we prepare for any birth. Because a mother comes, like in Pumwani, the way they come, mm -hmm. they sometimes just come from home. Mm -hmm. They labor and they just rush to the hospital. These are people you, these are mothers you've not even followed up at the ANT, ANC, wow. so you don't even know them. Mm -hmm. So when they show up, in your mind, yes, you'll do the physical examination, but you have to be prepared for either a term baby or a preterm baby. So what that entails is that at delivery room, we have to have the right equipment for any, any, any outcome, whether it's a term baby or not. And once the baby come out, there's a program we are, uh, 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 together with the Ministry of Health, we are really advocating for called Essential Early Newborn Care. Essential Early, early newborn, newborn Care, care. Okay. E -E -N -C. okay. And uh, maybe I forgot to say this in the introduction. <laughs> sure. I work in Pumwani Maternity Hospital. Okay. I'm, I'm currently in charge of clinical services, but uh -huh. I'm a consultant pediatrician. Good. So, yeah, so we train our providers on this program. And why it's important is so that they are prepared for any delivery. And when the baby comes out, they receive the quality care mm -hmm. 
according to their needs. So when this baby comes out, of course, the midwife will tell you quickly, they'll put the baby on the mother's skin, mm -hmm. they'll delay cutting the cord so that they allow some blood to get into the baby. Mm -hmm. But if the baby quickly, they do a quick assessment, if they notice the baby is not breathing, they rush the baby to a resuscitator. This is the place where now we stabilize the baby. So we enable this baby to breathe. Let me just but ask now a question, assume, I'm wondering. Yes. Do you turn the baby and... Is that a real thing? No, that's no. in the movie. <laughs> that's in the movie, and okay. it's detrimental. We it's don't bad. do that. Okay, yes, sorry, I just do. had to ask. <laughs> yes, we have other gentler and firmer way of stimulating a baby to breathe. Okay. Yes, just by drying, because you need to keep them warm. Mm -hmm. But coming to your question, you asked how we care for these babies. It's actually four prong. These babies, what I forgot to say, they are because they are born before their time, essentially their organs are, are immature. Mm -hmm. And their systems are also immature. So you anticipate that this is a baby who, even the lungs are immature, so mm -hmm. they may not breathe like a normal baby. Mm -hmm. They are born without what we call body fat. Their skin is so thin. You can even sometimes see yes. the, the, the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. So it means they are not able to keep warm because they do not have any reservoir of fat. You know, fat mm -hmm. is what really sometimes cushions you. Mm -hmm. So you have to ensure that the bathing area is warm. Mm -hmm. And when you put the baby on the skin to skin, of course, they'll benefit from the warmth from the mother. Cover them well, dry them, stimulate them to see whether they're breathing. If they're not breathing, then of course you're going to support the breathing. Give them oxygen. Now, what is different when you're giving oxygen between, a, uh, when you compare a term baby and a preterm baby, mm -hmm. the preterm, you can't give high level oxygen. It's, it's, it's toxic to them. Oh. So again, you have to control. You know, very, you, and monitor very closely how they are saturating. Okay. Saturation just basically means how they are taking in that mm -hmm. oxygen to their system so that they don't suffer the detrimental effect of your intervention. Mm -hmm. so, so we are looking, like I say, four prongs. We are looking at how the warmth that they desperately need, oxygen, they might need it because their lungs are immature. These are people, again, who are very prone to infection. And they're prone to infection because, again, the immune system is immature. Mm -hmm. So you have to ensure, one, that the delivery area is very clean. Yes. That the caregivers are remembering simple things like hard washing. Mm -hmm. That this baby is going to be protected against eye infection by giving some uh, preventive uh, ointment. We call it tetracycline eye okay. ointment. We give for all babies, okay. but we'll also give to the preterm. Mm -hmm. And then there is cord care, which we normally, we usually, again, use a, a sep an antiseptic uh, drops called chlorhexidine. Mm -hmm. So even that is applied. And then we give the baby to the mother, if the baby is stable, mm -hmm. after we have ensured that the baby is breathing, to do the KMC. That is kangaroo mother care. Wow. We'll talk maybe more about that and she's probably best place for it because it's a nurse intervention but yes. anyone can do. Okay. Yes, if they have infection, if they fight they have signs of infection. And these babies like I say, they are immature, so they may not even show classical signs of infection, mm -hmm. like a term baby, mm -hmm. you know, like fevers, because they are weak. So the cues that you might have that this baby may be unwell is the level of activity one. Okay. Then probably they are not they are not feeding well. Mm -hmm. They may not be even be in a position to suck because of the the very fact that they are premature. Yeah. Some may be able to attach, but others are not. But when you feed via the tube, like that mother was saying, or the cup, you'll notice they are not even taking that. So if you suspect they have infection, of course you have to start them with I, uh, injectable uh, antibiotics. So that's a so we Such a don't tiny care. Baby. Oh yes, they How go through a find lot. Anything? <laughs> we luckily we have very tiny, tiny okay. IV cannulas that we use on them. Okay. So we have talked about provision of warmth, uh, ensuring they are feeding. Uh, um, oxygen if they need it, then they are feeding, and if you are giving IV fluids, of course, you have to control it again because you don't want to overload them with a lot of fluids. Their heart is still tiny, mm -hmm. their kidneys are immature, so they need a lot of, let me say, they, it's labor intensive. You really have to take care of them when they are sick, but when they stabilize, now you, all along you loop in the family, that's what we are calling family focused care. Mm -hmm. So you need to really have the mother uh, at all times informed of what you are doing, and enable her to be part and parcel of the care mm -hmm. because it then become easier because as she said she's seen them losing it i mean they were not expecting such a tiny human being then you're telling her they have to be fed through a tube she has to keep expressing every like two hours mm -hmm. you know it's a lot of work for them even leaving the yeah. child in hospital i think that yeah in the really private setup hard. they do that yes yeah. as we don't have that luxury they have no. to stay with their baby oh, throughout yes cool. <laughs> yes it's That's nice but also, but also sometimes <laughs> It gets into them because remember they have other children they've left at home and then they are here you are keeping them a month or two 
they can't go, so sometimes they get to them. Okay. So we, we loop in counselors to talk to them. Then I'll also later talk about mentor mothers who we have really they are our champions. They mentor really, mothers. Yes, ah, yes. A lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> We're talking about this because today, November yes. 17th, all over the world, if you don't know, now you know, it's World Prematurity Day 2020. And Dr. Ray, the theme one more time. Uh, together, mm -hmm. for the babies who have come too soon, mm -hmm. Uh, forging to the future. Absolutely. Yes. And my personal tagline is born too soon. That's a yes. conversation we have. And welcome. We welcome you to the world. Yeah. Please pick up from my Dr. said. She said, when do napatiam to kangaroo care? What is kangaroo? The animal? <laughs> <laughs> no, kangaroo is a care that a mother gives to a, a baby who is born premature mm -hmm. or low birth weight that involves skin to skin care. Okay. Contact. Mm -hmm. Basically, the mother puts the baby in the chest oh. with the baby should maybe be on a diaper only, yeah. and the mother empty. Yes. With the, without, I mean, bare, mm -hmm. bare without any clothes mm -hmm. of them. You can at least wrap the baby well so that there's that skin to skin contact yes. that will help the baby regulate that warmth and temperature of the baby. Oh, okay. And what else do you do? I think the things Dr. Ray has not specifically mentioned. Talk to us about the care, the maybe she talked about also. Cord care, mm. at a mm. tree, ni cord. Gani, I'm a musician, <laughs> so a cord is oh. like do. <laughs> which 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 cord? Cord is that uh, the part that kitovu. Uh, Maybe people will understand yes, better. Yes, kitovu. Yeah, uh -huh. because when the cord is cut during birth, there's a part that always remains. That maybe after around uh, five to six days, it will dry, and fall off. Mm. So that part before it dries and heals, there's always that care that the, the cord will need, baby. It has to be kept, kept dry and clean because the baby can easily pick infections yes. through the cord if not well kept. I think I learned about this with a group of ladies called the Total Care Box. I don't know if you know them. They make like boxes for children with a small mattress and mm -hmm. one of the things they always include is something to wipe. Yeah. And they put 18 essential items mm -hmm. uh, in there. You know my mm -hmm. total care box? I have to hook you up. Total yeah, care box. Are you watching? <laughs> yes, do. they give out boxes, <laughs> especially like to women who go for antenatal. Oh, lovely. Uh, so if you don't mm -hmm. go for antenatal, mm -hmm. you know. Hey, total care box, you've not been to Pumwani. Yeah, we need to come. They it's need going to, come. to Christmas, you know? It's going to be great. Yes, awesome. Yes. Even as we do that, yeah. your questions need to come through 22232. We'll be answering them. After we go on a short break, we'll be back for all those questions, all the comments, and probably anything you might have gone through. As I've told you, consultation has been paid for. Let's talk about some pre-term birth complications before we go to the break. Okay. So again, thank you. Uh, again, taking up from where she left. Mm -hmm. Let me talk about our hospital because for sure we are proud being there. Working Absolutely. There. And uh, we are a regional trainer of KMC, Kangaroo Mother Care. Wow. 2017, we trained 14 African countries. Wow. We've also trained uh, most of the counties, of course, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. and partners. Mm -hmm. And we are targeting the counties that have the highest neonatal mortality. Okay. And this mainly, uh, Masabit, for example, we have um, Tana River, mm -hmm. West Pocot, Nairobi here, mm -hmm. surprisingly, and uh, uh, which other one? Trukana, I've said. Mm -hmm. So we started with those, but basically they have cascaded it through to all the counties. Mm -hmm. Pumwani has also trained trainers of trainer for KMC. TOTs. TOTs uh -huh. for both KMC and the early essential newborn care wow. that I told you about. Mm -hmm. So we're actually proud to know that you can come and learn with us. Oh, and, it's um, a great hospital. We I have, salute you. Yes, and we have work. 20 bed KMC uh, beds mm -hmm. at the moment mm -hmm. with the capacity to expand really. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's a bit just adding up on what she, she says now. the senior marketer. <laughs> <laughs> I can do so well. Really do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you asked about complications. Yes, these babies, because they are born before their time, most of their systems and organs are immature. Yeah. And because of that, the kind of complications we anticipate are actually follow that, that, that line of thought that they have immature uh, organs. So any organ that you can think of in this premature human being is at a higher risk of complication compared to one that is intact and mm. is working optimally. Mm. So if I may take you from head to toe, Please. maybe you may not get to toe, uh -huh. but um, we may pick the main ones okay. that really get affected. Okay. So if I look at from the head, I think of the brain. This, their brain is 
the way the, when, when they come out uh, before their time, the brain is immature. There is a covering of the brain that we call germinal matrix. Mm -hmm. That's just medical, but it's part of the brain. Mm -hmm. In these preterm babies, it's very, very fragile. And it's very prone, to, it's quite prone to bleeding. It's also prone to insult because of lack of oxygen. Yes. Remember, as I come to the lungs to tell you their problem, they are not also able to oxygenate well to their tissues. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are likely to suffer from what you call birth asphyxia, where you, you, the, baby doesn't, the brain doesn't get enough oxygen. Oh, no. And as such, in future, if it's not well addressed, it can bring other problems, like uh, learning problems, you know, mental issues, uh -huh. delays, yeah, and all that. Coming down, when you look at the eyes, these babies, because of their need for oxygen most of the time, if you're not careful, you might give excess oxygen. Mm -hmm. And oxygen, incidentally, is toxic to their eyes. Oh. So some of them end up being blind. So they really have to be monitored closely so that our interventions then don't become detrimental to them. So what we normally advocate, within the first month of their life, ideally, they should have their eyes sight assessed, mm -hmm. as well as their hearing. Then going down now, we think about the chest, we have heart there, we have the lungs. These babies are born with, uh, their lungs are sort of like stiff. Normally when babies are in the uterus, mm -hmm. they, are, they, don't, they don't require their, their lungs to breathe because everything they need, they get it through the placenta yes. from the mother. Yes. So when they are born, they have to breathe on their own. But these babies, they are born, their lungs don't expand as you'd expect. And the reason being, there are some chemical we call surfactant that they are not able to produce so mm -hmm. that it, it keeps the tiny, tiny air is down there open. Mm -hmm. So because this chemical is lacking, when this baby breathes out, the lung collapses. Oh no. Yes. So they tend to get what we call apnea, that is lack of, you yes. know, they just suddenly stop breathing. So you have to support that, you have to give them oxygen. Some, it's so severe that you have to require, you know, an advanced airway support for them. ICU setup or some other machines we call CPAP to just help them maintain that, you know, that those lower airways from collapsing. Yeah. Their heart is also t quite small, so they are what you'd call cardiac output and the capacity is quite small. So you, again, you have to be very careful with the feeds you're giving them, the fluid you're giving them, because if you give them excess, again, you'll tip them into failure because mm -hmm. the heart is not, you know, the pump, the pump function is it's also not working optimally. Going down, their liver is also immature. Mm -hmm. Liver helps to, you know, clear, clear out your system, you know, any toxin, anything. Yeah. So for them, when they break down any red cells, which sometimes it's, it's a normal thing that happens physiologically, mm -hmm. they are not able to clear out some of the byproducts of those red cells. Okay. And that's how come they become yellow, jodis. Oh, You've heard of jodis? Yes, heard yeah, of so they are not able to really you know, uh, manage that yellowness and to get it out of the system, if I may use that language. So, and yellowness is also, it's, it's like a toxin, especially when it goes to the brain, it can cause permanent brain damage, actually. So that is the, their liver. So again... So you remove it? Just curious. Before it goes to the high levels, yeah. you put them under special light, what you call phototherapy. Okay. So it helps to break it down oh. and make it easy to dissolve and get out yes. from the urine. And, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's the liver. Their kidneys, again, are immature. The same thing, you cannot, you have to be very cautious with the fluids you're giving them, even the medication sometimes. Like their dosages for some specific antibiotics have to really be, you know, tailor-made for that, that, that age. Mm -hmm. So, and then the gut. The one of the commonest problems they get is indigestion. Their gut is not, the, it's not producing enough enzymes. The mobility, motility of that gut is not uh, uh, good. So they, they tend not to, to tolerate, you know, a lot of feeds. Mm -hmm. So if you overfeed them, mm -hmm. the, the, the gut can undergo some condition we call a neck. I won't bore you with a long name, mm -hmm. but basically what it means is that that gut risk perforation and they can die. So it's a very serious condition. So they have all those problems. Eh? You go down, actually most of their systems, their skin is immature, like I said, it's so transparent, they can conserve heat, it's so prone to bruises and as such, the you know, infection. And the issue of their immune system not being mature, so they, they are very prone to, in, to infection and a condition we call anemia of prematurity. Mm -hmm. They are not only prone to infection, they are not also producing enough red cell mass. Mm -hmm. So they cannot maintain their what you call HB level. 
So these are babies and that you had from hemoglobin, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So, and because of that, you saw in that clip, the mother saying had one of the baby kept getting transfused. Mm -hmm. That's very common with preterm wow. babies. Wow. Because if you don't do that, then yeah, you, you can lose them. So we have a multitude of problems. <laughs> yes. Salute to everyone who has survived. <laughs> I have a new respect for you. <laughs> and today is World Prematurity Day 2020. We are marking it right here on Health Check on Hope TV, where you look and live. With me in studio is Isdora Opiti, who is a nurse and a midwife, and Dr. Beth Miner, who is a pediatrician, but she also does so many things, including marketing all the... <laughs> 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 thank, you, thank you for that. <laughs> um, we'll be right back. It's a great time in studio. And as much as it's so hard, it's still such a great thing to know that you can you will be fine, you can still survive. If you have a child with you today, go ahead, ask all the questions, triple two, three, two, and when we're back, the call line will be open. This is Health Check, only on Hope TV, where you look and live. Only God can turn a mess into a message. I have a boy on a wheelchair. Yeah. I'm still preaching on the, on the pulpit. Amen. Niliona mguu ya nyuma inakuja tu kunikanyaga imenilenga tu kwa tumbo. Nikaita na tu Jesus. I got tired of working with the x-ray papers and one day I just woke up and decided to burn them. A test into a testimony. The whole community didn't want to hear that anybody is born again. Excommunicated straight. Bila Yesu hakuna njia. Join Sharon Naitore Wangenye on Testify. Katika yo harakati yo spiriti kakemea wa mimi ni mona Yesu Kristo na mna hii. Kwa msalaba. Opa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every Thursday at 8pm for a moment to grow your faith some more. Join us every Sunday. For unlimited, Not in uplifting, yeah. powerful worship. Only on extended worship. Our Christian life is not just about God always stepping in when you are in trouble. But sometimes you need to go through the valley of the shadow of death and God will say, angels, stand away. He must go through that. She must go through that. Because out of this would come something greater and more beautiful. Kuletea burdani safi kutoka wanamziki wa nyimbo za sifa na ibada. Mahojiano ya moja kwa moja na mafunzo ya hali ya juu. Dhamira ya mtu ikifa anaweza fanya anything, anything. Because kile kina nitofautisha na mbuzi ni dhamira. There was this time niliambia mungu. Hmm. Mimi. Samahani mungu lakini naona umenifanya mimi kuwa daraja. Oh. Sitaki. Lime. Inu, lime inu. Ni mahali pa uchipuzi na ulezi wa vipaji oh. Mwimbaji anaweza itisha kitaka Lakini ojoyo ni sauti, sauti <laughs> Ajanunua e, Ujanunua, iyo, 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 iyo ni umebarikia na So, iyo unaweza mupe, ane haitha bure Ama. Lakini, <laughs> ipa nengine, sisi tupe invest Ni invest, metona Tunabeba mwini, lakini misi kujua Hii ni maagano lafanya Ungana nae mwalimu Shaban Brima kila ijuma sa mbili jioni na marudio kila ijuma mosi sa kumi jioni.
back. You're watching Health Check. It's on Hope TV where you look and live. My name is Kerry Kagiri and today I'm celebrating alongside some amazing women who do a lot for this nation. And wana jenga inchi, nimki pakarangi. These are the ones. We're talking about World Prematurity Day 2020. November 17th is a day to celebrate. I know you've heard and you know someone who gave birth to a preterm baby. Go ahead, send them a message of encouragement. Inspire them. Uh, the theme, actually my personal theme is born too soon, but Dr. Beth Miner will share with us the theme just one more time for anyone who is joining us right now. Together for the born too soon, caring for the future absolutely and we talk about caring for the future we were going through complications and uh doctor you shared a lot if you missed this video is on facebook hope tv kenya it is also on youtube at hope tv kenya so you can go ahead and check it out and share it as you also watch and get informed i want to welcome <coughs> our our nurse and midwife is dora opiti to also share with us some of the complications you might have encountered uh, during pre mat birth some of the complications on the baby. Okay, this are majority doing on uh, breathing mm -hmm. because you know this babies the, their lungs are not fully developed. Yes. So these are the major complications these babies have is breathing difficult. So these are babies who are immediately they're born, you have to ensure the oxygen supply on mm -hmm. standby mm -hmm. because definitely in most cases they will need oxygen in the first one hour of life. Mm -hmm. Another complication is hypothermia. These babies. As doctor has told us, the skin are not well developed, mm -hmm. so they cannot regulate they cannot regulate their body temperatures. You have to put them in a incubator or or maybe in a resource chair that that has a heat on it, mm -hmm. so that it can make them at least maintain their body temperature mm -hmm. to add them some warmth. Another complication maybe is infection mm -hmm. that is sepsis mm -hmm. you have to take care of your surroundings so that you don't introduce any kind of infection to these babies because infection cannot even happen around that period of birth absolutely yes this part i know doctor you're passionate i heard you saying it nutrition for the baby and the mother doctor uh -huh. Nutrition so, yes. for the baby and the mother. Oh, okay, yes. okay. Thank you for that. Yes. Yes. These babies, like we said, they need to be supported nutritionally, because one remember, um, babies when they uh, they are in utero, they gain most of their weight in the last trimester. Mm -hmm. So it means if they came out before that, they basically don't have enough store for themselves. So we have to think carefully what to give them and what they can tolerate. So if they are stable enough, of course, the best nutrition is the mother's milk any day. If they are not able to attach to the breast and suck, for example, if they are the extreme or the uh, very preterm, mm -hmm. you have to, ex we, we take the mother through that process of expressing her breast milk. Mm -hmm. And then we calculate the amount this baby needs to be fed either every hour if they cannot take a bigger portion or every two hours or three hours. So we, like I said, we partner with the mother mm -hmm. for the care of these babies. Mm -hmm. So we feed that milk. At the same time, we monitor how the baby is tolerating the feed. And this we are able to tell because if they are not tolerating, they'll either, they'll either uh, vomit or their abdomen will start, you know, swelling up or mm -hmm. distension, as we call it. We also monitor how their output is, how many diapers the mother is able to change because it it's also tells us that the baby is digesting well. Mm -hmm. Now, if the mother does not have milk, because that does happen sometimes, because one, the very fact that she gave birth prematurely, two, she might be too stressed, and three, there are some mothers who, they don't establish lactation immediately. Mm -hmm. So for such, for us, again, in Pumwani, we are lucky because we do have human milk uh, bank. Where A human mother, milk bank? Oh, yes. So <laughs> for the mothers who are who have excess milk. They feed their babies to their full and then they donate to us the extra milk. Okay, so let's talk about this because I've learned still on this show that there are different levels and layers of milk as you progress as a mother. Yes. You know, like there's the thick milk, there's the yellow milk, there's a watery, watery one for when they are starting. Mm -hmm. So do you have like... <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you. Yeah, so milk production, yes. Nature is so kind to us, it imagine. Is. So it, it ensures that whatever your baby needs at a certain time, mm -hmm. you're going to produce yes. it. So this mother who has given birth prematurely actually produced some unique milk mm -hmm. to cater for that preterm baby. Ah. Believe it or not. Wow. So it has different nutrients and composition compared to a mother who gave birth to a term baby. What? Yes. So even when they donate to us, we have to label that milk as preterm donated human okay. milk and term donated milk. Gosh, so you, yes. in the future I can come and donate milk? Yes, when That's we scale so it up, we'll call it up, believe us. <laughs> wow. Yes. So basically, but of course we ensure that the milk is safe. Of course, know? of and course. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, so that's the next best nutrition for the baby. Mm -hmm. If the mother cannot get her own milk, mm -hmm. we, we get from the bank. Yes. Now, in the event that we don't, the mother does not consent for the bank uh, milk, mm -hmm. then we, now that's the time we, we you know, we evaluate for other options, what we call breast milk substitutes. Again, with breast milk substitute, we don't go high on it because one, the kind of community we deal with, they mm. may not be economically empowered to afford it, but there is preterm formula. Mm -hmm. So that's what next, you know, the third in the line that would go for. But that's a baby who is tolerating oral feed. And oral feed in this case means either they probably were born late uh, or rather near term, so mm -hmm. they are able to breastfeed, or mm -hmm. they can be fed via cup. They are tiny, tiny nippy cups that mm -hmm. we use, of course, with measured, you know, amount. If not, then we give them uh, through the tube, a feeding tube. There's a tube we pass through the nose all the way to the tummy. <laughs> and then we use, we attach a syringe to it. And like I said, for us, we utilize the mother. So we've shown her how to measure, how to hold the, the, and the, the, the baby. Yes, and then it goes, flows smoothly, you know, using gravity. So that's for the baby. Apart from that, as they progress, we give them, we supplement, we, we give them some supplements. Mm -hmm. Again, because they were born early, so they didn't have enough time to accrete or to store up some important nutrients. This is calcium, folate, you know, uh, iron. So those ones will come in a supplement now, mm -hmm. over and above the feeds we are giving. For those who are not in a position, maybe the baby is too weak or, or, or sick to tolerate oral feeds, we start them with IV fluids. IV fluid basically is just the drip. We give them via drip, again with a measured um, uh, giving set that will give just the amount that the baby needs. So it has sugars, it has all that. Coming to the mother, what we actually advocate for any breastfeeding mother is a balanced diet. Yes. Yeah, we usually not, you know, high on telling you have to drink uh, camel milk, for example. No, we ensure goat that milk. goat milk. Uh -huh. We ensure that you take what you enjoy eating as long as it's balanced diet. What you is balanced jam. diet? Let's just balance like this. balanced. Yes, and balanced diet has the three main classes of food. Okay. We have carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. That is the that is calorie or energy giving foods, mm -hmm. and these are our common ones, which are very balanced much available. Yes. Yeah, we usually. So there is uh, potatoes. You know, that class. You know, the tubers, the roots. Then we have the vitamin-rich foods, or the so-called protective foods. So these are your fruits and vegetables. And then we have the proteins, and proteins are both plant proteins, beans, legumes, and then animal proteins. In this case, we really advocate they take iron-rich food, because remember, they've just given birth, so definitely they have lost blood, and calcium-rich food, mm. because lactating or a nursing mother, they're in a high calcium demand state. Absolutely. Yes. As I'm trying to open your questions on Facebook and on our text line triple two three two, continue sending them in on Facebook at triple two three two. That's what's playing. You are very passionate in emotional psychological support. What is some of the support you give the moms? Well, some of the support we give these mothers include maybe telling them how to take care of the baby, mm -hmm. how to handle this baby what to expect from this baby, some of the challenges that in involve having a preterm baby, mm -hmm. because these are the, some of the things that they should be ready to face. And uh, again, there are some things that we need to tell them, like maybe have to identify some uh, problems with the baby, maybe, maybe when the baby is not well, so that maybe if a nurse or the doctor may not pick it, this mother can definitely come and tell us that I've realized there's something wrong in mm -hmm. this baby. This mother, we empower them. So
so that they can also play a major role in taking care of this baby. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, for also the training, what, what does it do? Like do you see them in a room and like have a class or something? Yes, we normally have some health talks in the morning. Uh -huh. For mothers maybe who are not in KMC, we have categories of mothers. There are mothers who are permanently on KMC and there are What is mother. KMC? I think you said it Kama, Kangaroo Mother Care, sorry. Yes. We have mothers who are permanently on Kangaroo Mother Care place where we have around three rooms mm -hmm. where we admit these mothers. Mm -hmm. And then we have mothers who maybe their babies are in the newborn units and they stay in the wards and they come three hours to see these babies. Okay. So every day, maybe at 9 a.m., we normally convert these mothers and we give them, we give them health talks on... Um, some of the issues that they expect around yes. their children and mm -hmm. so many things. Yes. That's very, very important. The call line is now open. You can call us live. The number is running right below here. So call and ask uh, our midwife, also nurse is Dora Opiti, and our doctor, Beth Miner, who is a pediatrician. And today's conversation is because we are celebrating World Prematurity Day 2020, having conversations on, number one, the possibility, and it's a huge, what is the possibility of survival? Let's just, do you have a figure? Uh -huh, thank you. Uh, it depends on how preterm a baby is. Okay. Like I see the extreme, those who are low, below one kilo, mm -hmm. their chance of survival are a bit, are sadly minimal mm -hmm. in our setup. Mm -hmm. So we lose about 80% of them, mm -hmm. all right? Wow. Then between those who are between a kilo and 1.5, yes. they have, of course, 50 to 60 chance of making it. Then those who are above 1.5, 90%, most of them actually do survive. Okay. Yeah. So what, what really matters is uh, the gestation one and two, if they have complications okay. or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, questions are in on triple two three two. We'll get straight to them as we wait on you to call. One is asking, how soon should I introduce my preterm baby to solid food? And I think also there was the same person asked, hi doc, is there a special meal for a six month preterm baby? As you answer that, will you will come Doctor, you answer those two. You'll come and answer, is there a connection between prolonged labor and preterm birth? So you'll answer that. Doctor, can you pick yours first? Number okay. one, how soon should I introduce my preterm baby to solid food? Is there a special meal for six months preterm baby? Okay. So again, thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. uh, let me first uh, go back to the nutrition as we well know it for the preterms and this also cut across for term babies. The first six months are very critical nutritionally. And like we say, the best nutrition is mother's milk, mm -hmm. whether it's a preterm or term baby. That's what we are advocating for. Of course, for preterm, Apart from getting the milk, we are supplementing, uh, we are giving some supplements mm -hmm. as well, the calcium, the iron, mm -hmm. you know, the micronutrients, um, I mean, micro, uh, vitamins. And we follow them usually every, every month or even um, or more often than that, that if, 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 if it's necessary. Mm -hmm. So the winning time for both remain at six months. However, I know there are some who, uh, when we assess them at around five months, mm -hmm. Remember, every time we do growth monitoring, we are charting their weight. So yes. we are able to follow and see the trend, how well they are gaining that weight. Mm -hmm. So it, on case-by-case -case basis, there are some we've been forced to give either a supplement formula milk at five months or even start early weaning at five and a half. But majority, because they catch up. Actually, by the third month, you'll be surprised. Wow. Many have caught up with their mm -hmm. counterparts. You may never even know mm -hmm. they were preterm. In fact, some even overcompensate. They end up even being, you know, bigger than the others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so majority, really, let me say, we don't, usually we don't, we don't advocate for any food before six months. Mm -hmm. So at six months is when we win. And winning, again, we look at the same, the, the, just the same way I explained nutrition, nutritional requirement for the mothers, it's the same with the babies. We need them given, nat preferably natural foods, but balanced diet. Absolutely. Yes. Wow. Okay. And let's come to your question, the one I asked you to answer. Um, <coughs> prolonged labor and preterm birth. Okay. There's no relationship between prolonged labor mm -hmm. and preterm birth. Prolonged labor can be defined as labor that exceeds 18 hours from onset. Mm -hmm. 
that is maybe a labor that will go up to 24 hours, 26 hours, or maybe 30 hours, which yeah. will be looked into and the cause yeah. should be known. Preterm birth is a baby that is born, a delivery that comes before 37 weeks of gestation. Okay. Yes. Okay. One is asking, uh, Grace from Eldoret, thank you for watching the show. She has called asking why preterm babies turn yellow and what is the treatment? And we had mentioned this earlier, but mm -hmm. you can go ahead and explain. Okay. So, yes, uh, thank you. The yellowness is a condition we call Jodis. Yes. This is a pigmentation that is a byproduct of broken down red cells. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Naturally, the body has mechanism to clear that out. But preterm babies, by the virtue of them not, uh, their, their liver not, not, not being immature, yeah. and as such, not having, a, I would say, effective enzymes that really, you know, break down that, 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 that product, mm -hmm. they accumulate that. So they end up actually accumulating that, uh, that, that uh, pigment. Yeah. So, and the only way it's, it's expressed is by you know, staining on the skin, so on the, the eyes. eyes? Yes. Yeah, they start with the eyes mm -hmm. and then to the skin and then it progresses all the way. And it usually progresses downwards as it increases. So mm -hmm. if you find a baby whose sole of the foot is yellow, it mm -hmm. means that that jodis is quite severe. Yes. Yes. And now the now treatment. Now the treatment, depending on the levels, usually we'll take the blood uh, from the child, just a small amount, take it to the laboratory mm -hmm. so that we're able to know the levels. So if it's not too high, there are some we know by just breastfeeding the baby, taking oh. the routine care, they will manage it and it will, you know, it mm -hmm. will clear. Mm -hmm. But there are some we know, uh, I mean, uh, depending on the level. Yes. If it's high, we start with a management we call phototherapy. Yes. These are some special lights that we put the baby under, naked, maybe just with diaper, and uh, they are there 24-7, just maybe having breaks for feeds. Yeah, and it breaks it down for them. If it's too severe again, there are those who will need to do what we call exchange transfusion. Mm -hmm. So it's where we'll somehow get out that blood and replace it with, you know, oh. with okay. cleaner blood. Okay, yes. so Grace, I hope you have an answer. I hope you can get the support that is needed. Let's uh, go to this question. How do you feed, um, uh, feed preterm considering their organs are not fully formed? And when do you consider TPN over EBM? That's Jack. What has he said? <laughs> TPM na EBM ni nani? Okay. <laughs> Maybe I can help. Them. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, TPN is total parental nutrition. Okay. So these are babies who we they cannot tolerate uh, oral feeds, mm -hmm. and of course they have bypassed the time period that they can be maintained on fluids okay. because fluids, remember, is just a temporary measure we take, awaiting the baby to feed. So if you go beyond seventy-two hours. Feeds only provide glucose mm -hmm. in the minimum, on the maximum. So they need other nutrients to grow. So for a baby to grow, if beyond there they are not feeding, in a setup where uh, they are able to do that, they insert uh, a long catheter or let me say, uh, as we call them central lines. Eh? Mm -hmm. This is a bigger, you know, IV line that is inserted either through, you know, the neck. And they use that to pass nutritious food. So it's, it's, it's a good way of feeding the babies, mm -hmm. especially those who are too sick. Mm -hmm. But it requires a lot of close monitoring and some laboratory support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the question for him, what is EBM? EBM is expressed so, breast milk. Okay, so the question was, how mm. do you feed preterm considering their organs are not fully formed? Mm. And when do you consider TPM over EBM? That okay. was his question. Okay, so EBM is the first choice, of mm -hmm. course, because one, because of ease of administration, okay. is easily available as yeah. the mother who is uh, expressing for you. So, yeah, so that's what most of the facility would go for. Yes. TPN is when you, the baby is too sick to mm -hmm. tolerate the oral feed, yes. so you cannot give the milk. Okay. So then that's, that's the option. You have. Okay, so when the baby is too sick, so yes. then you consider, so you consider TPN when it's gotten to a certain point when they need they need it completely yeah for growth for growth yes okay yet they are not you're not able to feed them yes. orally yes. okay yeah okay so you just monitor alongside the kgs you're expecting estimating 
them to yes, get. Yes, that is yeah. Whichever feed yeah, you have to monitor weight yes. off, literally on daily basis yes. because you, you there's a, a range we aim at to okay. know that we are doing well. Okay. Yes, but TPN. Let me add, mm -hmm. you also have to monitor their liver and kidney functions regularly because remember this is a nutrition that is going straight to the circulatory system. Mm -hmm. So you want to be sure that the organs. This baby's organs are handling this 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 diet. Yes. Yeah. Okay, the question I'm Charles 28 and married. My wife is blessed with a baby girl who's now one week. My question is why is she vomiting after being breastfed? Is this okay? Let me start by asking is this a preterm or just yes. a term baby? Is it a term baby or a preterm? It's actually a text on triple two three two. Charles, okay, please okay. give us this information. Uh yes. Okay. But vomiting generally depends on uh, again how severe it is. Mm -hmm. There are, there are some children who burp and their burp look like a vomit. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they just fed some feed pretty fast, so they swallow in air in the process, mm -hmm. so immediately then they throw up, mm -hmm. okay? So we usually consider, or how we assess vomiting is one, how frequent it is and whether the baby is vomiting everything, and then if it's associated with other signs, danger signs as she called them, or mm -hmm. other signs of infection, mm -hmm. because it can be an, a sign of early infection. Okay. But for such, you notice other symptoms, like, you know, the baby just look lethargic, they are inactive, mm -hmm. you know, they're looking dull. So for such, then it's important you take your child to the hospital, baby to the hospital. Definitely. But anytime you're not sure, of course, take your baby to the hospital. Mm -hmm. There's also another condition we call reflux, yes. which is pretty common. Mm -hmm. So it also presents with vomiting, you know. So if again, it's, the baby is not throwing up a significant amount, Sometimes we give it time and okay. it clears. But if it's a lot all, all the time or the baby is again refusing to feed in the process, mm -hmm. then kindly and quickly take the baby to the hospital. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our nurse is Dora. This one goes to you and Dr. You can also chip in. Tips to help in delayed milestone in preterm babies. Okay, you should first identify mm -hmm. why is this baby not thriving because that is a baby who has failed to thrive. Mm -hmm. You should... At least seek assistance from, from the hospital so that this baby can be examined. Maybe the doctor can pick something and help you on why this baby is not thriving as, as it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Okay. Doctor, some of the tips you can help with delayed milestones. Delayed okay. milestones is like, okay, fine, maybe you or something. <laughs> yes. <those> okay. <laughs> milestones, they are the developmental stages. Okay. Yeah, pa as the baby grows, they are what we expect to do. Like mm -hmm. say, for example, walking at one year, sitting at six months, you know, those kind of things. Eh? So as she said, you have to really, we, we follow, one thing we forgot to tell you, once we, we manage these babies, mm -hmm. for our case in Pumani, we discharge at 1.8 kilos. Okay. I, most of the centers, I think, is at two kilos. Mm -hmm. You don't stop caring for them at that age. Mm -hmm. So you follow them up till they catch up, and for us, we follow them up to one year of age. So every month they are coming. So every month you examine them. Of course, you take the weight, mm -hmm. the vital and other vital signs. Yes. Address all the concerns the mother have, mm -hmm. and then now assess those milestones. The, what you expect for that age. Yes. So if you notice they are delaying, then you have to ask yourself why. Mm -hmm. Say for example, is a baby you expected to be sitting at six months, and the baby has not sat. Mm -hmm. So you have to go and review the supplements. Whether this mother is still giving supplements. Remember what we say that these babies are born before they have. They have uh, stored up the, the, the vital, essential uh, micronutrients. Mm -hmm. So things about vitamin D, calcium, they are key in bone and muscle development. So if you have given supplements, ensure that they are being taken and then that the mother's when once the bottle empties, she remembers to get mm -hmm. to you know to mm -hmm. get a, a, repl mm -hmm. a replenishment. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Confirm whether the supplements are being given. Yes. And in the right quantity. Mm -hmm. Then two also, if it's a baby who's supposed to be already weaned, assess the nutrition. Because some fail to thrive because, again, the nutrients they are on, eh, food-wise, is not the right one. So again, take the mother through. Some we even attach them to our nutritionist mm -hmm. to work with them. Mm -hmm. If we see all this has been done and this baby is still delaying, now we loop in the other caregivers. We have the occupational therapist who work with them. So some, you know, stimulation here and there, some exercise, and they catch up. But remember, there are some other screening I talked about earlier, about the vision, about hearing. Some of these delayed milestones mm -hmm. may be coming as a result of a problem that was not, you know, detected yes. early enough. See, for example, a baby who is not hearing. 
you know, those are the babies who will delay even in speech mm -hmm. because they can't hear what you're yes. saying. So unless somebody picked that up early enough, it, it can, you know, uh, fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what, that's what I would tell them. That they, they honor their clinic days mm -hmm. and then ask all those questions. I always tell their mo the mothers and fathers that they're the first doctors of their babies. Absolutely. Yes, so okay. if they have a concern, let, they, let us know. Dr. you'll come back to answer, is being obese a risk, a risk factor for giving birth preterm? We talked about this, so go ahead and repeat. A question for you, our midwife and nurse, is use of kerosene and biofuels for cooking or being predisposed to them when pregnant a risk of delivering premature children? <laughs> I've never heard of that. Maybe, Doctor, if you have anything about that, but I don't think I've never had anything. I don't think like it's that. directly, but I can talk of risk factors, other risk factors that may be related a bit, like mm -hmm. smoking. Okay. Yeah, smoking okay. and alcohol intake and drugs, yeah. those are risk factors mm -hmm. of getting an obese child. Okay. I mean, uh, a preterm baby. So yes. Yeah. Okay. So, kerosene and bio, not a direct. Not a direct, but it can affect the health of both the mother and the baby. Absolutely. Are living there. Yeah. If the, the mother can be able to breathe well to mm. give birth, it's a situation. Or, uh, no, I'm, I'm looking at it in terms of other health, it being a health hazard okay. and affect her in many other ways. Got eh? it. Yeah, like okay. airway, the integrity of your air, you know, is it's a function of what you breathe and yes. how clean and uh, you, the, air, the air is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the one mm -hmm. that you're breathing. So any pollution has an impact on the integrity of your yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about being obese as a risk factor to giving birth preterm. Uh, yes, I would say it is not per se directly, but obese people remember have uh, are at a higher risk of what we call uh, NCDs mm -hmm. or non-communicable diseases. So they tend to have deranged sugars. Sometimes they might have high blood pressure. And these two factors, as we well know it, they, they contribute highly into getting a preterm baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes. So, it's not really direct as such, but that's something that has been noted. Yes. And uh, did we talk about this? I think you answered this, but sorry to make you repeat mm -hmm. if, if you did. How soon should the preterm baby be introduced to solid food? We talked about six months. Six months. Yes. Same Yes. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. This is, you have about uh, five minutes to call in and ask any questions you might have. Our call line is running down below the screen. We want to welcome you to go ahead and ask the questions live in studio today, being the World Prematurity Day 2020. We're celebrating it and we're saying together. For the future. For the future. <laughs> no, together. Okay, together. Uh, I'm confused. <laughs> I know together is like the middle word. Okay, what you are saying, we are uh -huh. calling upon all stakeholders yes. to take charge and help these preterm babies to achieve their potential. Absolutely. So it's together for the babies born too soon, yes. caring for the future. Together for the babies born too soon, caring for the future. Yes. Absolutely. Some of the stakeholders, let's go through that as we uh, get to pick up the calls and continue to answer the questions on Facebook, on all our social media platforms. Who are some of these stakeholders that, uh, you're looking forward to partner with? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So to start with, the key people is the parents, yes. both the mother and the father. I know we've talked of kangaroo mother care. Mm -hmm. We should add a caveat there. There is also a kangaroo father, father care. care. Wow. Yes. So at home, when you discharge, you encourage the fathers to also be part and parcel mm -hmm. of the care for these babies. Mm -hmm. So the parents. And then they live in a community. Yes. So we have to think about this community. So we've gone ahead and looked in what you call the community health volunteers or workers, mm -hmm. because these are the people who really know where these pregnant mothers are, for example. Mm -hmm. So they would actually go out and encourage them to go to the clinic when it's their clinic days. And uh, nowadays we are also telling them to, you know, uh, sensitize mothers on some of these uh, basic data science for the babies so that they can come to the clinic on time. Mm -hmm. So that's community at the community level. When we come to the facility level, the other stakeholders is healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. I noted the sub-theme for today's uh, World Prematurity Day in Kenya mm -hmm. was capacity building the healthcare workers. Wow. We have realized that some in the lower, especially in the lower facility level two and some level three, they may not really be well equipped to take care of preterm babies. So by the ministry and other partners coming together to train them, you know, uh, empower them with the right skills, mm -hmm. then it means that even if this baby is born in that very lower, you know, machinani facility, yes. The baby will be taken care of and they will be able to even do timely referral mm -hmm. to a higher facility if mm -hmm. need be. Then now the others are our partners. Remember, 
health is really, it's quite broad and we need to loop in all the stakeholders. So our partners in this case uh, are the private uh, uh, workers mm -hmm. as well as the NGOs. We have the WHO, we have UNICEF, we have USAID, we have Save the Children. All these mm. partners, UNFP, they come in very big mm. and uh, they collaborate with the Ministry of Health and directly even with facility to support the work we do. Absolutely. And then, of course, the ministry and the county government. Mm -hmm. Really, we cannot overemphasize uh, their role in, mm -hmm. in, in care of these babies and maternal and newborn health in general. So they, they know the things that we need. The Ministry of Health support us with policy, guidelines, and then to implement them, of course, the county have to come in and see really what it entails to implement a guideline, you know, so that they provide the right, you know, uh, infrastructure so that we are able to move. Absolutely. You might be wondering why this show is really essential to you because one out of every 10 babies is actually born premature. And so if you haven't yourself, someone around you has and they need all the necessary support, which is you having knowledge, information, uh, being so kind and gracious uh, towards them. Thank you, Benson Matissia, for telling us you're watching from East Lee this morning, this evening. Thank you so much. Evening Kavai as well. Tuned in. Thank you, Vincent Mweka. Tuned in at HPFS and Bakasi and watching some of the theories behind premature birth and uh, some of the things that come under it. One here, Mwando Mwawasi, is saying what really causes jaundice. And I think you've shared this and he's been answered because that was 30 minutes ago. And saying there are many theories under it. Mara kama mama haku water, njua vizuri akiwa pregnant. I don't know. Anyway, the young one was born with it and had to stay under phototherapy. Uh, for almost a week, and thank God he came out fine. Let's talk about some of the theories. Why do guys get premature birth? Then theory. See, There are many myths here. Yeah. May start here. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Because mm -hmm. we've, we've had actually mothers coming, and uh, we find that they are not cooperating mm -hmm. you know, in the care of these babies. And when you dig deep, then they tell you, no, it's because uh, it's, it's a taboo where I come from to give birth to a preterm baby. They would really even want nothing to do with it. There are some who believe so, that it's like they've been bewitched. Why did, why did I get a baby who is in premature? In fact, some community in Northeastern, they don't really consider they should take care of those babies because to them, I mean, they can always get another baby. So really, the issue of psychosocial support coming wow. to demystify that and to mm -hmm. let them know that this is a human being and just by giving the right kind of care, they will live uh, like any other baby. So there's a lot of that. And then even Jodis, there are those who believe again is they, 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 some uncalled, you didn't you know, fulfill some, some things, rights. You had, some rights somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... I remember one case where the mother demanded to be discharged to go and make peace with an uncle very far in Western Kenya and leave a baby. In fact, no, wanted to go with the baby because they believed that that uncle was to use some leaves and boil and do something to the baby. But the baby was pretty sick, so we, we had to really cancel her a lot, yeah. So there's a lot of those beliefs. Mm. Okay, so did she call him or video call <laughs> Zoom? I don't know, I'm not making part of this, but I'm just like... Uh, okay. She didn't bring she didn't bring him on board, but uh -huh. we, we 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 talked to the father of the baby, and wow. we agreed that we continue the care. Yeah. Okay. After have you thought of any? No, there are no, no meat. Okay, so <laughs> it's just what it is. Uh -huh. But preterm birth and uh, preterm labor and preterm is a real thing. It happens in this nation, and we need all your support. What can you tell family members, uh, people who are around the mothers giving birth preterm? What could you encourage them to do? Okay, first of all, we should take it as something that can happen to anyone. Yes. Uh, it's not uh, something abnormal. Mm -hmm. It's only abnormal th only that this baby came too early. Yes, born but too soon. Both, or born too soon. <laughs> so we should be ready to counter such challenges. We should involve health workers, yes. ask questions where necessary, ask for help where you can't, so that at the end of the day, this baby should benefit mm -hmm. because it's the but is the center of everything to see this baby thrive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's so hopeful because there's so many young, amazing, and they're always the most brightest in class. I mean, they always come out at the top. Yes. Uh, let's ask you, Dr. Ari, what would you recommend? Family, maybe even brothers, uh, 
the husbands themselves, we're talking about just any relatives around uh, premature babies. Yes. Yes, I had already mentioned about family focus. Too. Yes. And family, family as we know in Africans set up. <laughs> it, it goes beyond the nuclear family. Absolutely. Really. Yeah, but to start off, we always cancel the, the, the father of the baby when they come. So what uh, we didn't tell you is that we also have this group we call mentor mothers. These, mm -hmm. are, these are mothers who've gone through the program successfully and they can come and showcase their babies. Mm -hmm. In fact, the long, the long serving one we have, her baby was 600 grams, that tiny, tiny less than a kilo. The baby is now three years, thriving very well. So she comes with her baby to the unit and goes and talks to the mothers who are actively now doing kangaroo mother care. Mm -hmm. So when they see her baby, they're very encouraged. And that, during that visit, we also encourage if you have a partner, you know you can tell them to come so that they also hear this talk. And the, the fathers, you know, when we talk to them, they, 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 they are so excited about it and they are so positive. So at the point of discharge, they already know that what they need to do, mm -hmm. how they need to support this mother. Wow. Sometimes to even relieve her, because you know, KMC full continuous out of Kem, uh, kangaroo mother care is in two phases. Mm -hmm. You can either do it intermittently, where you're doing partly, then you know the baby just is wrapped uh, the normal way. But while in the hospital, we prefer the continuous one, where you are with the with the baby throughout, okay. just trapped on your because you can feed, you can watch TV, you can knit, mm -hmm. you can do so many things when the baby is here and there. Many benefits when the baby is there. Oh, wow. So they only take breaks, you know, bathroom breaks and yeah. all that. So it Which can be you tiring. Can still go with your baby. No? <laughs> No, okay. Yeah, well, we don't <laughs> no. encourage okay. so that you ensure so. that you, you, you are not inconvenienced. Yes. But yes, so th sometimes it can be tiring. Can you imagine the whole day you're there with your baby? Oh, so when you go home, you also want a car break. So if, if you have your sister there, your mother, your husband, they can also strap because as long as the baby is well fed, yeah. they'll just be put but there and, they, you know, they are soothed and they sleep there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that support is very key. So that is one. To help her, you know, put the baby on kangaroo. Mm -hmm. If they're not able to do that, can they support her in this other cause that African women tend to yes. do? You know, we are the chefs, you are True. the one who is sorting the other babies, True. you are You're running, cleaning everything. cleaning everything. Mm -hmm. So when you can, a helping her really come in handy. Wow. Then the other way is to be there for her when it's time to go for clinic. Mm -hmm. In fact, even taking upon themselves to remind her, yeah, mm -hmm. today's clinic day, can mm -hmm. I carry your bag? And we encourage that. It's just that COVID has happened, so we are not taking in a crowd to come to the ANC mm -hmm. clinic. But having people reminding her and showing her this is the right thing to do, it's time for immunization, take your baby, it goes a long way, Absolutely. even relieving some of their, you know, their psychosocial issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes it can really be overwhelming. Wow. Yeah. I think as you think about your closing remarks, and we'll have to end there, we can't talk about the, uh, what do you call it, the postnatal depression, all that stuff, mm -hmm. not not here. We do have a video on that, however. Mm -hmm. I just want to celebrate my cousin, Suvira, who was born very premature, actually at 17 weeks my aunt lost the synovial fluid up to about two centimeters. But through prayer, support, and being on bed rest, she actually got back and she was telling us, it's like synovial fluid was like coming back into the body. Where is it produced from? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's something, one of the biggest miracles. And Suvira is now one year old oh, yeah. and actually That's slightly past a year. And we had to have a Zoom birthday because COVID. Plus also they're in California. So hi oh, guys, okay. we need to celebrate that. Uh, that's one of the miracles I saw with a premature tiny baby. Of course, got a few issues. What, what do you do when you have a hole in the stomach? Is it called? Hernia. Yes, he had a hernia, mm -hmm. got a surgery, mm -hmm. healthy, handsome boy oh, surviving. That's, that's so I have seen it story. with my two eyes. And I mean, so many other my friends. Congratulations to mm -hmm. all of you who have made it through yeah. uh, with your amazing babies. Uh, Emma, uh, so many people. Taji. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so... What are your closing remarks as we wrap up this episode? My closing remark on premature babies. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should we should empower everyone in the community, not to judge these mothers, not to see mm -hmm. premature births as something abnormal. We should embrace them, support them, 
encourage them to take this, this to take good care of this baby. So at the end of the day, we will be happy to see this baby was born one kg or six hundred grams or nine hundred grams, and now it's really thriving. Oh, it, wow. it will be the, the joy Absolutely. of everyone. Absolutely. Yes. And even as Dr. is about to give her closing remarks, I want to thank Marcy and Kevin Kibet for sharing your story, for letting us see your amazing children, baby Victor and baby Vincent. Congratulations and may God continue with you and happy premature world uh, happy world, world prematurity, prematurity day, day 2020 to you yes dr so thank you yes as we come to the close i want to address the stakeholders yes starting with the parents first to congratulate you that mm -hmm. you brought life to the world that's such a gift from god and you should be happy and feel blessed to have a baby whether the baby is preterm or not please know that there is care is available for your baby you just need to access it and we are ready for you in the health facilities. I want also to talk to the communities. Please support these mothers. They go through a lot, but with your help, they will make it because we have seen many who are born preterm and they've grown to uh, great people, you know, and they are running the world. And to the governments, county, Ministry of Health, our partners, please let's do this. Let's continue supporting the healthcare uh, services to the mothers, the maternal and newborn health. It's one of our main areas that uh, we target to bring down the bad trends that we've had in the past. We know very well that neonatal mortality is quite high in this country yes. and in some counties especially. Yes. And it's being driven a lot by preterm deaths. Mm -hmm. We lose about approximately 40 babies a day in this country of ours. So those are many. But we, I know we can reverse the yeah. trends. We can invest in health infrastructurally, healthcare workers, equip them with the right skills, equip them with the right equipment. And yes, we will win this war. I believe so. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. ladies. Thank you for your time. I thank you for everything you're doing to actually partner with God. Literally, uh, you guys treat God is healing. And if you weren't there, one part would be missing. So thank you so much. And for you, you need to go to Facebook, share this video, let everybody uh, get to know, even as we celebrate World Prematurity Day 2020. This is Health Check. Coming up will be News Watch with Tony Omondi. He is in the building. I'll see you tomorrow on Hope FM, where you listen and live for Team Worship Wednesday. It's Gary Kagiri signing out. Thank you, ladies, one more time. Keep it right here. Don't touch the dial. Bye.